हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट चैप्टर टू ऑफ क्लास इलेवेंथ फिजिक्स व्हिच इज यूनिट्स एंड मेजरमेंट्स दिस चैप्टर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर होल क्लास इलेवेंथ एंड क्लास ट्वेल्थ फिजिक्स बिकॉज इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक वट आर यूनिट्स वट आर डायमेंशन वट आर एरर्स विच आर वेरी 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 यूजफुल एंड इंपॉर्टेंट टू स्टडी ईच एंड एवरी टॉपिक ऑफ फिजिक्स दैट यू आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन क्लास इलेवेंथ एंड इन क्लास ट्वेल्थ because the concept of units and dimensions is applicable to each and every physical quantity and in each chapter you are going to study three four new physical quantities and you have to use this concept so you cannot skip this chapter and directly start chapter 3 you have to study all these concepts so let's start we will start with the meaning of physical quantity what is a physical quantity physical quantity is something that we are going to study in whole class 11 and whole class 12 so you have to understand uh, the concept of physical quantity so what is a physical quantity a physical quantity is a quantity that can be measured that can have a numeric value for example length is a physical quantity because length can be measured and it can have a numeric value if you if you will measure the length of this stylus then it suppose it comes out to be 10 cm so the length of this stylus has a value 10 so any quantity that can be measured in a numeric value that is called a physical quantity there are other quantities also those uh, quantities cannot be measured like like if we say anger anger can we we know anger is there anger is something but anger cannot be measured in a value right so anger is not a physical quantity a chair is kept here suppose we'll talk about the weight of the chair so weight of the chair is a physical quantity because weight can be measured in a number length of the chair is a physical quantity density of the material of the chair is a physical quantity but chair in itself is not a physical quantity because it cannot be measured you you cannot say uh, what is the value of chair right you you can ask uh, number of chairs you can ask the length of chair you can ask about the mass of the chair so all those things are physical quantities but chair in itself is not a physical quantity right so a quantity that can be measured and can be expressed as a value is called a physical quantity for example length mass volume force pressure density and there are hundreds and hundreds of physical quantities that you are going to study in physics and in chemistry and in maths also right okay types of quantities there are two types of physical quantities we are going to study almost 100 150 physical quantities in class 11th and in class 12th but all those quantities can be broadly classified into two categories fundamental quantities and derived quantities so fundamental quantities what are fundamental quantities beta fundamental quantities are those quantities which which are not derived from other quantities which do not depend on other quantities okay what is the meaning these are the quantities which do not depend on other quantities <clears throat> there are seven fundamental quantities but okay let's let's first first discuss the meaning of this statement that these are the quantities which do not depend on other quantities what is the meaning of that students there are quantities which depend on other quantities let's first talk about those quantities for example area if you if you want to find the area of any figure like circle like rectangle like triangle so you have to know the parameters of that figure na if you are if you are going to find the area of a circle then you cannot find the area of a circle without having the radius of the circle because area of the circle depends upon the radius of the circle area of rectangle depends upon the length and breadth of the rectangle area of triangle depends upon the base and height or number of uh, or the length of sides of the triangle so area is not a fundamental quantity because it depends upon other quantities such quantities which depend upon other quantities are called derived quantities right but if we talk about the mass you you wouldn't have studied any formula for mass because mass is a fundamental quantity mass of a body does not depend upon other quantities like it does not happen that if i say if i change something of this body then mass of this body will change no okay if 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 i'll break this body in two halves then the mass of one part and the mass of other part will be different so mass has changed 
but but mass of this whole body remains same if you add the masses of those two parts you will get the same value the mass of this body so mass does not depend upon other factors so mass is a fundamental quantity right so quantities which depend upon other quantities they are called derived quantities and quantities which do not depend upon other quantities they are called fundamental quantities as i told you we are going to study almost 150 200 physical quantities but but it is very interesting to know or shocking to know that we have only seven fundamental quantities like other numerous quantities depend only on the combination of these quantities each and every quantity except these seven each and every quantity depend on these quantities right so these are the seven quantities which do not depend upon other quantities if 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 we study the names of these quantities there, there there are some quantities which about which you have heard before but there are other quantities also which you do not know about so okay let's start uh, we'll we'll discuss each and everything so there are seven fundamental quantities first is length length we all know what is what is the meaning of length mass we are going to study the meaning of all those things in detail but right now we are just discussing what are the seven fundamental quantities so let's fix our focus to that only so length mass time temperature you have an idea of all these things electric current you have studied this quantity in class 10th amount of substance what is amount of substance amount of substance refers to the number of something like if you say five apples if you say 10 chairs if you say 20 pens so these values 5 10 20 these are also values so number of something is also a physical quantity which which does not depend on other quantity so if if we express something as a number in physics we call it amount of substance right and seventh is a luminous intensity which is which is a quantity related to the measurement of the intensity of light so we are not going into the details of this quantity you are going to study this quantity in class 12th in chapter optics if it is going to be in your syllabus in next section in next session in this session this quantity is not in syllabus so you are not going to study this quantity in any of the chapters right so these are the seven fundamental quantities okay besides these seven base quantities there are two more units that are defined for plane angle and solid angle these are called supplementary units so apart from those seven fundamental quantities which we have just studied there are two other quantities which can be taken as fundamental quantities and those two quantities are plane angle and solid angle what is a plane angle plane angle is something that you have always studied studied in classes these two lines these two lines uh, let's name them something these two lines uh, oa oa and ob these two lines oa and ob are in the same plane the plane of this board these two lines are in the same plane so lines which are in the same plane angle between those lines that is called plane angle this is the angle that you have always studied in mathematics okay you until now you you haven't you have not studied solid angle in any of the classes in mathematics so this is a new thing for you but let's first discuss about the plane angle so what is plane angle you know what is plane angle but but there is there is something that you are uh, going to study there is something new thing for you and that is the unit of plane angle which is you what is the unit in which you have studied this angle before and that unit is degree right but degree is not the standard unit of the angle standard unit of the angle is radian and we are going to study about units in in coming videos so we'll discuss about radian right what is solid angle solid angle is something uh, which is formed in three dimensional objects for example this is a sphere okay let's make it as a sphere this is a sphere okay and if i cut this part you must have seen 
watermelon when we cut watermelon from here to the center and we take out this piece what is the shape of this piece you just have to imagine things because this is a two dimensional board on which i am making three dimensional figures <laughs> okay so so what is the shape of this piece shape of this piece is this right so this angle which is formed here this is also an angle but not in 2d in 3d this angle is called solid angle it is not it is not of much use in uh, physics but in class 12th chapter 1 there is a small concept based on solid angle and for that we have to remember this thing if you can't remember this thing you you are going to study again this in class 11th chapter 1 class 12 chapter 1 so uh, that is not an issue if you cannot remember what is solid angle but let's just uh, discuss the unit of solid angle and we'll go ahead unit of solid angle is steradian and symbol of steradian is sr symbol of radian is rad right so this is the solid angle and these two units are counted in fundamental units so seven fundamental units and these two fundamental units are called supplementary units okay okay now discuss let's discuss derived quantities derived quantities we have already already discussed these are the quantities which depend upon other quantities so apart from those seven any other quantity that you are going to study or you can think about that is a derived quantity for example force momentum acceleration volume density pressure work kinetic energy potential energy movement of inertia surface tension <laughs> what is movement of inertia what is surface tension if you are new in new in class physics in class 11th and you are studying uh, this is the only chapter that, that you are studying and you have not studied any other concepts of class 11 then uh, let me tell you you are going to listen to many new physical quantities which you have you have not studied till class 10th so like 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 movement of inertia like surface tension so don't worry we are not going into the details of these uh, quantities but just we have to remember the units okay so we'll discuss about that uh, let's not get confused so okay international system of units let's come back to fundamental quantities so i'll give you some examples that 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 will give you a good idea why we are calling these quantities as fundamental quantities if you take any other quantity apart from these seven if you take any other quantity and suppose suppose we take force where should i write okay let's write it here suppose we take force and you keep on expanding the terms which are appearing in the formula of force for example force is mass into acceleration okay so mass cannot be expanded further because it is a fundamental quantity but acceleration can be expanded further so let's write mass as m and what is acceleration acceleration is change in velocity by time change in velocity by time now time cannot be expanded further because because time is what time is also a fundamental quantity now we are left with velocity only now let's expand velocity velocity is displacement upon time now all these quantities mass cannot be expanded further because we have no formula for mass as it is a fundamental quantity time cannot be expanded further displacement is what displacement is length don't go for words displacement distance radius diameter length breadth height width depth all these are length terms okay so displacement is what displacement is length and that also cannot be expanded further so finally this is the form on which we have arrived and whenever you expand a formula whenever you expand a formula and you keep on expanding that formula until you cannot expand it further then all the quantities that are appearing in that form the last form the finally expanded form are only these quantities right mass 
time length and there are some formula in which you will get temperature in you in in which you will get electric current like yeah, like you have studied some formula in class 10 like ohm's law v equal to ir or the formula of heat i square rt you will get electric current if you keep on expanding those formula but in class 11th now this is important in class 11th in first 75 percent of the syllabus the quantities that we are going to study depend only on mass length and time we are not going to use temperature electric current amount of substance or luminous intensity for first 75 to 80 percent of the syllabus in last two three chapters you will get some quantities in which you will get temperature when you expand the formula of those quantities but in first 80 percent of the syllabus we are going to study only those quantities which depend upon length mass and time only right so if if we if if we want to decide the unit of each and every quantity then as we know we will just focus only on on these quantities first let's 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 understand the concept and and then we will go to the other quantities first we will focus only these quantities which depend upon length mass and time right okay so if we know that each and every quantity depend upon length mass and time then why we have to decide the unit of each and every uh, physical quantity let's decide the unit of only length mass and time and we know that the quantity depends only on length mass and time then we can get the unit of the quantity for example based on this discussion what is the unit of force let's say let's decide let's decide that we are going to take the unit of length as meter and unit of mass as kg and unit of time as second unit of length as meter unit of mass as kg and unit of time as second so based on this discussion we can say that the unit of force this is what this is mass m is mass so kg this is what this is displacement which is length kg meter divided by there are two terms of time and we have taken the unit of time as second so kg meter per second square is the unit of force if we take the unit of length as meter unit of mass as kg and unit of time as second right so we don't have to decide the unit of each and every physical quantity because we know that the quantity depends only on length mass and time so let's decide the unit of length mass and time and the unit of other quantity will automatically be calculated it 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 will come automatically so we don't have to remember okay so so the fundamental question is what are the units that that we are going to decide for length mass and time so based on that we have named some systems which are called the systems of units and these systems are internationally accepted for example in mks system we have decided that mass is going to be in kilogram length is going to be in meter and time is going to be in seconds and this is the most famous and important system of units because all the units that are that are appearing in mks system are standard units right kilogram is the standard unit of mass meter is the standard unit of length second is the standard unit of time other useful systems are cgs in cgs we have decided that the mass is going to be taken in grams and length in centimeter and time in seconds and there is another system fps not very famous in india fps we are not going to use fps in any of the questions we will we'll study it here and drop it here right fps foot pound second for mass we are going to use the unit pound symbol lb for length we are going to use the unit foot symbol ft and for time we are going to use the unit second all uh, in all systems the unit of time is only seconds right so this is the most famous system so these are the three international units of 
systems. For example, let us take that formula again. What was the formula of force? Finally, it was mass into square of the length. No, mass into length divided by divided by square of the time. Square of the time. So, MKS unit of force is MKS unit of force is kg meter by second square. Okay, MKS unit is kg meter by second square. If we use kg for mass, meter for length, second for time, then that unit of the quantity is called MKS unit. Okay, now if we use this, this and this, that unit will be called CGS unit. For example, CGS unit of force, CGS unit of force. CGS unit of force is what? Gram, put gram in place of mass, centimeter per second square. This is called the CGS unit of force. Similarly, you can find the FPS unit of force. So, these are the three internationally accepted units, systems of units. SI system, okay. You all must have heard about the SI system in class 9th, in class 10th, you have used this, this, this word. Ki what is the SI unit of length? It was written in books. Your teacher must have told you about this. The SI unit of length is meter, SI unit of time is second, SI unit of force is newton, SI unit of work is joule. So, <coughs> what is SI? <coughs> SI comes from Systeme Internationale de Unites, which is the French for International Systems of Units, right? So, SI units means the standard unit, standard units, unit which is internationally accepted. Okay. When we decide that something is going to be the standard unit of a physical quantity, like why the standard unit of mass is kilogram, why not gram? And why the standard unit of force is Newton? Why not some other unit? Because there are some advantages of SI system which are very useful for many practical purposes for calculations and other important things. And those merits are these. First of all, SI is a coherent system of units. What is the meaning of coherent system of units? this the unit of force is calculated by multiplying and dividing the units of the quantities on which the force depends right so that is the meaning of coherent system this means that all the derived units can be obtained by multiplication or division from a certain set of basic units we have decided that these seven are fundamental units and out of out of those seven, three were more important. So, those three were the more important fundamental units and 80% of the quantities can be calculated now if we know the formula of the unit, formula of the physical quantity, right? You know the formula of force, mass into acceleration and then you know the formula of acceleration which is velocity by time and then you know the formula of velocity which is displacement of displacement upon time. So, by knowing just the formula, you can find the unit of any physical quantity. So, this, this, this type of system is known as the coherent system of units, which is, which is one of the most important properties of or merits or merits of or advantages of SI system. Okay. Second one is SI is rational. There is only one unit for any physical quantity. For example, joule is the unit of any type of energy. In SI system, we, we give one unit for similar quantities. So, we have decided that joule is the unit for any kind of work or any kind of energy. For work, for kinetic energy, for potential energy, for heat energy, for other types of energies, we have only one unit which is joule. But that is not the case with other systems. In, in CGS system, the unit of work is ergs, ERGS, ergs. And the unit of heat is calorie. 
but heat is also a type of energy so that makes things a little bit confusing but there is no confusing in this system because this system SI system is a rational system by SI by SI we mean the MKS system because all the units in MKS system are SI units so basically by by studying the merits of SI system we are studying the merits of MKS system so MKS system or SI system is a rational system right okay it is internationally accepted it is an internationally accepted system all countries use this system right why this is internationally accepted because the units can be easily compared units can be easily reproduced units can be easily compared like uh, you can easily compare uh, between gram and kilogram you know that the kilogram is thousand times heavier than gram so so this makes things very easy easily reproduced what is the meaning of easily reproduced a replica is of units can be easily formed like you you must have seen one kg weight with a vegetable seller or or any other shopkeeper you must have seen that weight of one kg so many replicas of that weight are available because each and every shopkeeper has its own one kg weight and you can also go and buy your own because we can easily create the replicas of 1 kg weight, 1 meter rod because these replicas are very easy to form which that, that means these units are easily reproduced, right? And these units are invariant in time. These units are not going to change with time. Like if, if 1 meter is this length, then this is not going to be this length in, in next 100 years. It is going to remain as this particular part of the length. So these, these, these units are not going to change with time and most important thing SI is a metric system of units metric system means if if you want to change one unit into another of the same quantity you just have to multiply or divide by the powers of 10 and multiplying and dividing by the powers of 10 makes things very easy like if you want to convert meter into centimeter just multiply by 100 if you want to convert centimeter into millimeter just multiply by 10 if you want to convert kilogram into gram just multiply by 1000 so 10 100 thousand all these are powers of 10 and it has only one type of unit for same types of quantities this thing i think we have already discussed so these were the fundamentals of units next lecture is going to be very 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 important because we are going to study about the dimensions there are many things in this lecture which were easy which which you already knew but in the next lecture you are going to study an entirely new concept of dimensions which you haven't studied before so that lecture is going to be very important and there are some many important numericals that are frequently asked in school exams based on the topic and applications of dimensions. So, I'll meet you in that lecture. All the best.